Hey there, YouTube. This is SGM4306, and I uh, was, um, I was, you know, going through uh, random eBay listings, and um, I'd s seen that um, my friend Patrick had gotten a uh, night vision monocle scope sort of thing and repaired it, and um, I don't necessarily need any night vision equipment, but it's really cool, and I think. Um, it's really interesting how it works. So I decided to uh, search for one myself. I found this guy for 30 bucks, which is pretty cheap for what it is, I guess, um, just to tinker around with and try to repair. This guy was listed as, um, as not working, turns on for a second, and then shuts off. And that's the exact same sy symptoms of the one that uh, Patrick had, and his uh, ended up having, um, there's basically arcing internally on the high voltage rail, and it obviously prevented it from turning on so i figured you know for 30 bucks i'll give it a try I found this guy it conveniently uh, uses uh AA batteries as opposed to the majority of the smaller ones which um require special expensive lithium batteries three volt ba batteries so uh, i thought that was a good start i uh as soon as i got this i was going to film it i was really excited i just wanted to test it out real quickly so I threw some batteries in, and uh, lo and behold, it works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with the, this. The uh, seller, the only thing I can think of, the seller assumed that when you click the uh, power button, that it was supposed to stay on, like latching, like a digital circuit. But this is uh, an analog tube, and you have to press and hold the button. They probably didn't know that, and thus they thought it was broken. But I guess good news for me um, that it, it actually... Um, works sort of even though i wanted to do a repair anyway um there is an ir illuminator on this guy i've already opened this up partially just to take a quick look inside and so we're just going to unthread the uh the lens on the front and uh you can actually see the the front side of the tube right now uh down there is the high voltage transformer we're actually going to go a bit deeper into this uh, first, we are going to remove the um, the eye lens, the eyepiece lens on the um, objective side. Here we go. Um, and there's some like little washers and whatnot. Be careful not to lose that. There is a um, a ring here, and I've removed it using a pair of tweezers, so it's already loose for me, uh, loose enough that I can just do this by hand. Um, this wouldn't be the case if this were the first time that you're opening it. This was on fairly tightly. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't get the joy of uh, fixing this for you guys. Uh, but you get to see exactly how this is made and uh, how it works. So I guess it's a win-win in the end. So anyway, get this off. And we are going to remove the batteries. Probably should have removed the batteries first, but whatever. Okay, so now there's four screws on the front there, and they are uh, flathead screws. Okay, so now you just need a little bit of uh, prying. There we go. The uh, strap fell off on the side there. Just want to be a little bit careful. Okay, there we go. Don't want to break any wires. So here is the inside of a. Uh, this is a Gen One tube. Just to let you know, obviously it's. I bought this for thirty bucks. This is for a. a it's a consumer device, so it's not going to be military spec or anything like that. We have our high voltage uh, rubber booty. Um, we have a board underneath with just two tack switches. They're just momentary. And one of them goes to the IR LED in the front here. Um, that's just going to be an IR LED, obviously, so nothing really that exciting. Um, there is a little optic in front of it, I guess, to um, to set the, um, the beam width and whatnot. We have our AA battery case, um, which goes over. And finally, we have two leads going over to the tube itself. Now, the tube runs at 3 volts. Um, well, externally, from the perspective of the user, 
Um, a lot of these tubes run on relatively low voltages, like 1.5 to 3 volts, but there's a, actually a step-up converter inside, as I mentioned, because this is a vacuum tube, so it requires, uh, I believe, a couple thousand volts, something like that, to operate properly. So we are going to carefully wiggle this out, and it should pop free because we removed the screws on the front. There we go. And there's um, some retaining like shims in there as well. So um, this board looks like it's kind of not heat staked, but um, there's some like uh, retaining clips that you probably could pull out if you needed to, but um, it likely damage something because it looks like it's just into plastic. So that would probably snap and I would have to hot glue that in. So I'm not gonna remove that for now. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, two uh, flathead screws on here, and uh, we should be able to kind of, yeah, we can pull off uh, the front part um, that has the threads for the uh, front lens, and you can kind of get a better look at this. I'm going to be very careful not to touch uh, anything in here pretty much. Well, nothing's dangerous. It's not active, but I don't want to get any contaminants on the uh, front lens uh, side of the tube there. Uh, this is the switching converter. Um, there's a, what appears to be a transistor or something. Looks like there's a little metal heat sink, uh, very interestingly enough, in wrapped around uh, this transistor. I'm guessing that's the primary side. Um, you can see some diodes, uh, some capacitors, resistor. Um, interesting construction. There's actually like a... a acrylic clear plate that the uh, transformer is glued to and that is in due uh, in turn screwed to the um, that big PCB the phenolic looking PCB in there um, just looking at this let's see yeah, you can see the input wires snake around to this side here so this is going to be kind of low voltage side I guess uh, with with a tank oscillating circuit uh, it looks like there's a um, I'm not going to mess with that, but right in there, there's a, vari a variable capacitor. Um, so this is going to be like a um, an LC tank circuit or something like that to oscillate the uh, transistor primary, and then the secondary side goes off here into the tube body itself. And that's going to, there's going to be a voltage multiplier. So the, the output voltage of this transform is likely to be maybe a couple hundred volts uh, but it needs to step that up to a couple thousand, so it uses a uh, like a voltage multiplier, a couple stages. Anyway, um, we're just going to, and you can see here the uh, actual part that you view is uh, just like a CRT screen. It's a green phosphor. Um, different gens have um, like there's newer white phosphor versions. Um, the reason why green was generally used is our eye sensitivity to green is a lot higher than other colors. So you can discern a lot of, a lot more different shades of green than you can any other color. Okay, carefully remove this as a million shims fall out of the way. And um, yeah, this is just a, um, a ring, a plastic ring, I guess, to, uh, to seed it and to protect the end. Here you can see the actual insides of the tube, uh, which is really crazy. Um, there's sort of a metal cylinder surrounding um, the phosphor area. You can see the high voltage lead um, goes in and then touches that. So it's, um, it's applying a positive charge on this end and a negative charge on this end. So it's generating, um, when light enters the tube, this is a, a light intensifier. So not sure on the exact um, physics of it, but um, basically it'll uh, translate that into many, many more electrons. So every photon of, of infrared light uh, gets multiplied into many, many electrons that are accelerated towards the viewport side of the tube. And um, it does that via the high voltage. So, and once they hit the phosphor, they actually make the image itself. So it's actually rather interesting how these work. And the fact that you could see like right into the tube—that's that's crazy. Um, 
I'm going to see if I can grab a small flashlight for you guys and um, you can get a better view. You can see the evacuation ports on uh, this side and this side for when they drew the vacuum. And you can kind of get a sense of how they actually uh, manufactured this. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a little pocket flashlight. And kind of hard to see. I can see better than you guys. Uh, but yeah, it looks like there is actually some um, dust or something on the surface of this tube. So should give it a good clean. Let's see if I can... Yeah, there you go. You can see exactly how it's, um, that the middle part's kind of just floating in there, um, connected via the high voltage. There. That's fascinating. Okay. Yeah, and obviously, if this tube were on, you would never want to shine a uh, bright light into the uh, viewing end. Uh, because what would happen is um, you would get such an intense stream of electrons going towards a phosphor screen, it would actually literally burn uh, the image into the screen and it would actually like destroy, start destroying the phosphorus. So um, that's generally not a good thing to do. Uh, but if it's off, there's, there's no harm. It's actually a misconception. A lot of people think that even in the off state, light can damage these tubes. That's, that's not how it works. Anyway, I'm just going to get this all back together and we can do a quick, fun little test of uh, using it. Hopefully I can uh, capture it on my phone screen. Okay, so it's a bit echoey. It's because uh, I'm in my bathroom right now, actually. It's um, too bright outside. I didn't want to wait till nighttime. So I'll show you. Um, hopefully you guys can see. Um, this is my wallpaper. <laughs> but yeah, you can see everything still works just fine. Uh, I have noticed it's, it's a bit difficult to uh, focus. Um, you have to kind of adjust um, both the front lens as well as the eyepiece. Uh, and it changes pretty wildly. So this is not something that you would use like close quarters or anything like that. Um, especially since the optical zoom is, I think, 10 times or something like that. So you really want to be using this like kind of outdoors at a distance sort of thing going on there. Um, this is without the IR LED, obviously. Uh, there's no external light source in here, any no ambient IR in my bathroom. So you can't see anything. But um, at night, you can see a little bit without the IR, but the IR definitely does help. You can see some kind of splotches or something. I think that's um, dust that I got on uh, the lens or something when I did the teardown um, that wasn't there before. So I'm going to have to get a... Um, compressed air or something in there and clean off the uh, inside of the lens and everything. But yeah, it's everything works and um, works pretty well actually. Pretty pretty cool technology. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys um, enjoyed this teardown video and whatnot and if you didn't know how these uh, older, you know, tube-based night vision systems worked, you have a little bit of a better idea and you can always do some more research and whatnot. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.